So I've just been shooting a short video on my DSLR camera and I want to import the files into iMovie. The approach I'm going to use here is an approach that's often used in professional workflows with DSLR cameras and it can apply to many different editors aside from iMovie. For instance Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, as long as they're on the Mac in this specific example. The first thing that I'm going to do is take the flashcard out of my camera and I'm going to plug it into my computer using my external card reader. I'm just going to wait for a little minute for it to pop up. Now you'll see that the files immediately load into iMovie but I'm going to ignore that for a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my finder into a new finder window and browse to my camera files here. The files themselves are stored in the DCIM folder and here is the file that I recorded and it also has a thumbnail which is used by some applications to recognize the movie file and to provide a little image thumbnail. Professionally speaking it's always a good idea to organize your own files and also make backups. An Apple Mac can enable you to do this in a really easy way using a facility called Disk Utility and I can open Disk Utility by going up to the spotlight here and searching for Disk Utility. In fact just by putting in Disk it's brought it up as the top hit. If I load this up We get a number of different options and it looks very confusing here but what I'm going to do is browse down to my EOS digital folder here and I'm going to select new image up here. The next thing I'm going to do is come down here and make sure that read only is selected. This mostly is to speed things up. I need to give this a name and it needs to be something that I can recognize. Now I just did this and I know that it's for a project that I'm doing about using the iPad so it's um, I'm going to call it using the iPad and give it a number at the end. I don't have a folder in my hard drive at the moment for this and I'm going to create a new one. This is my fourth hard drive in my Mac and it's where I keep all of my media files I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this the iPad project and click create. So in the iPad project folder I'm going to be creating a disk image which is a direct copy of the folder and all the files that are stored on the flashcard from my camera. So it becomes a direct copy of my card on my hard drive. Having given it a name, chosen the location, selected read only, I can then click save. This process takes quite a while and the more files there are on the card, the longer it takes. I had a really short file so it's taken almost no time at all. Now I'm going to close disk utility down. I'm going to come back to finder again browse to my hard drive. This is my media drive. You can see the new folder that I created and here is my disk image. So what I'm going to do is eject the card from my camera now and remove that from the card reader and put it back in the camera. Great. Now I'm going to show you what this disk image does and I'm going to do that by double clicking on it very quickly the folders open up but I'll just close that for a minute and what you can see here is that EOS Digital has reappeared and that is because this disk image is an exact copy of the card that came out of the camera when I highlight it the folder structure is exactly the same as on the card that was in my camera but this is all stored on my hard drive there's my movie file brilliant in fact, if I just press my spacebar, I can just double check that it's there. It's very crude, but it's a good example. 
So the advantage of this is that I've got an exact copy of the card and it's stored in exactly the place that I want it on my media drive in my iPad project file and it's given a name. Brilliant. So now I'm going to import this into iMovie and the easiest thing here is to use iMovie's import function. If I go to file import movies if I browse to the EOS digital file here just expand that out a little and then I find my movie in the usual location here I can create a new event and call it something like that I stick to the usual settings here I like to optimize my video and what I want it to do is copy the files and that leaves the original files intact and this is very important I'm going to click import it's a short video so it shouldn't take too long to process longer videos do take time okay the files imported and I can see it in my event library here and there's the completed video now what I can do is right click and select entire clip and then copy that up onto my project box here now if I wanted to import some audio onto that there are a number of different ways you can do that I mean for instance I can go down here to the music and effects tab and I can find my iTunes library and choose some music from there here's my iTunes library music a much better way of doing it for me is to copy the files in now what I would have to do is f create some files and put them on the same project folder and I'm going to do that now so here I've created an audio file that I recorded on my zoom h4 and I'm going to import that into and use it over the introductory section of this video file and I'm going to do that really simply by simply dragging it over and plonking it in there brilliant that's the audio file there and if we want to play it all through hello this is my introduction to using the iPad okay it needs a lot of editing and a lot of adjusting the sound quality is not particularly good but that's the main point of it what's happened is that I've created a disk image of the original card from my camera that can be used as a backup then I've then allowed iMovie to copy the video files out of that into a different location and then what I've done is created an audio file which can also be backed up I've put that in the same folder so I know where it is and I've imported the audio file into iMovie just by dragging it in